what's up everybody watching in the computer smartphone tablet or tv this is andy and welcome to my 2020 wwe super showdown prediction video the pay-per-view will be taking place tomorrow february 27th 2020 at the muhammad abdu arena on the boulevard in radia saudi arabia if i'm mispronouncing it i do apologize the pay-per-view will start at 12 noon Eastern on the WWE Network. So just want to give everybody the heads up that it's going to be a 12 noon pay-per-view tomorrow, which I'm still wondering why they couldn't do this on a Friday. Considering that tomorrow I have a meeting in the city and I'm going to be way behind on the pay-per-view. And I want to apologize to everybody. I have not been able to play WWE 2K20 this week just because of my hectic schedule. So all you're seeing right now is a promotional poster with Goldberg featured. And I will get to Goldberg and Lesnar. Don't worry. You all have my word on that. But needless to say, once again, I'm all caught up in the role of WWE. Thank goodness SmackDown is on Fox Friday nights. Thank goodness WWE has the top 10 countdown video on YouTube. So I at least know what is going on in the world of WWE. And I check the news websites relating to wrestling. So I am fully in tune on what's going on in the world of WWE. Now, as far as the matches are concerned, we have in total 10 matches on the card. We have 9 on the main card and we have 10 altogether. The only pre-show match we have. So I'm assuming the pre-show is going to start at 11 o'clock Eastern on WWE Network. The only pre-show match is the Viking Ra Raiders, Eric and Ivar taking on the original club, the OC, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson in an exhibition tag team match, except for one fall. Uh, this is just going to be easy to pick out of the bloom. I'm just going to say the OC wins, I guess because it's momentum for AJ Styles heading into the gauntlet match, but I'll just say the OC wins deck with it, right? <laughs> okay, let's get into our main card. So I'm going to organize it like this. Umberto Carrillo taking on Angel Garza. This has been a rivalry that's been going on the past couple of weeks on Raw. I, of course, saw the highlight on YouTube. Of course, Umberto and Angel did fight this past Monday night on Raw. Angel Garza, if you're not aware of the situation with Angel Garza... He now has Selena Vega as his manager. And Selena Vega is, of course, the manager of Andrade. So if you're wondering what that's all about, then good. You're all, you're all caught up on that. But I think this is the one where Carrillo finally has it against Garza. I think Umberto Carrillo does prevail in this match. Next up, we have Mansoor from NXT taking on Dolph Ziggler. You have to have Mansoor win. This is his home country in Saudi Arabia. So he is going to pick up the victory in this match. Now, I'm just double checking to see if we have any other non-championship matches. I'm just double checking here at the moment. Okay, the only other non-championship match is Roman Reigns taking on King Corbin. Hopefully, this is the last match between these two because it's getting very annoying. There is a stipulation in this match. It is a steel cage match. In the end, the big dog prevails. Roman Reigns defeats King Corbin. Okay, let's get into the other championship matches. We're going to go to the SmackDown Women's Championship. I'm very excited about this match because this is the second ever female wrestling match in the country of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, of course, with their customs. So, let's get into it. Bailey, your current SmackDown Women's Champion taking on Naomi. I think in the end, Naomi is going to prevail. Because, look at it this way. WrestleMania is in Tampa. It is only an hour away from Orlando. So, you'd have to think that, oh, well, we have a situation where you want somebody from Florida to be the champion heading into the pay-per-view in April. So, why not? So, your winner and your new SmackDown Women's Champion will be 
Naomi, and she will go on to defeat Bailey. And this Bailey heel turn's just really getting annoying. Every week on SmackDown, it seems they just have to continue with it. But I'm very happy Naomi did change her hairstyle. I love it. So Naomi has a lot of momentum, and she'll win. End of story on there. Okay, next up, I think we'll go to tag team division. Let's be fair to the tag team division here, so we'll go to that first. Okay, um, keeping in mind there's no female tag team match. Honestly, I even forget who the tag team champions are in the in the uh, women's division. WWE Women Tag Team Champion. I'm just curious. I'm just double-checking it for a second. Right now, the tag team champions at the moment are the Kabuki Warriors. So they even have a match scheduled to defend the titles. Well, that's that's not related right now, but I was just curious to look that up. Okay, let's just stick with on the card. This is only in the men's division. So in Raw, we have Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy taking on the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins, and Montez Ford. Uh, honestly, why would the Monday Night Messiah even end? I think most likely it'll end at WrestleMania. Or maybe even at the Chamber. I don't know. But why would you have the Monday Night Messiah um, end their reign? So, Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, and Bunny Murphy defend against the Street Profits. Now on to the SmackDown division where I will make the obvious prediction here. The New Day, Kofi Kingston, and Big E taking on John Morrison and The Miz. New Day is going to defend, and I'm going to go into the reason why. You have the Usos, who have just come back. They are hungry for another shot at the titles. Wouldn't you want to see the New Day take on the Usos in March? I certainly do. I want to see it definitely happen. Now, don't get me wrong. John Morrison, since he's come back, he's won all his singles matches. But do you really think they're just going to rush The Miz and John Morrison to have the tag team titles? Maybe down the line, but not right now. I think they will continue with that storyline this year and then eventually put the titles on Morrison and The Miz. The bottom line is, Nune has to win. Because are you going to have, once again, Miz and Morrison go into WrestleMania as the tag team champions? That's kind of pathetic. The Usos, once again, have more popularity than John Morrison and The Miz. Especially how Morrison and The Miz are, are what, a heel tag team? So, Usos and New Day, it's going to happen. So, therefore, New Day defends the titles in this match against John Morrison and The Miz. Okay. Okay, now we're going to move on to the WWE Championship. Obvious, this is a spoiler, as what Paul Heyman always likes to claim. Brock Lesnar will be the spoiler, once again, defeating the weak opponent known as Ricochet. Now, I'm impressed by Ricochet, don't get me wrong, but I know what's going to happen. The bell will ring, ding, ding, ding. Lesnar's going to catch Ricochet. F5. 1, 2, 3. Brock defends the championship. Or maybe Ricochet will have an upper hand maybe. He'll try to land that finish or whatever it's called. I can't even think at the moment. But Lesnar will counter. Lesnar always finds a way to counter because he, he's been doing that since Undertaker it seems. Lesnar's winning. Do you honestly think they're going to botch the match against Drew McIntyre? What are you going to do? Make a triple threat match? That would be pathetic. Going into Tampa. So, Lesnar defends. I don't even know why we're having this match in the first place. Honestly, Lesnar shouldn't even be defending. It's like, why are you having Lesnar go to Saudi Arabia and then what? Not fight until April? Very pathetic in my book. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the Universal Championship match. Alright, so, Universal Championship match. The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, taking on Goldberg, Goldberg, Goldberg. That's right, Bill Goldberg. <laughs> Alright, so, um, how will this match end up? 
Um, here's how I think this match will actually end up. I think this match will be probably the longest on the whole card, I guess. I guess that makes sense. Because Goldberg is a, a credible opponent to The Fiend. Don't get me wrong. I I will admit, and this is, this is why I like SmackDown better than Raw. It seems SmackDown with their writers. And especially, I guess, because Fox has a lot of expectations to give for SmackDown every Friday night. The writers have been doing a very good job promoting this match. I guess because maybe Goldberg presented this idea. Hey, let's have the match in Saudi Arabia. You know, we'll be on Fox. Make people get WWE Network who watch Fox every week. And then, I don't know, go into Saudi Arabia and then be like, Oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tell the story this way. We'll have an intrigue. We'll make sure... Goldberg, being the fearless guy he always is, yes, everything built up for him. So we'll, we'll do it this way. So, overall, I think this will be a long match. I think The Fiend and Goldberg will definitely have an epic battle. And in the end, and I think this is going to make complete sense, because maybe this is the way to set up Roman, the triple threat match I keep talking about with Roman, The Fiend, and Goldberg heading into Mania. I keep hearing it could happen. But, the way things are ending up right now, I could see Goldberg definitely 100% winning this match. So therefore, your winner, and hitting the spear against the Fiend to wrap it all up, and the new WWE Universal Champion, Goldberg, Goldberg, Goldberg. Goldberg will be a two-time WWE Universal Champion. So there you have it. That's how I think it will go down in that match. And the main event. The gauntlet match for the Turquoise Trophy. AJ Styles taking on Andrade. Taking on Bobby Lashley. Taking on Eric Rowan. Taking on R-Truth. Taking on... Rey Mysterio. I'm going to go on a bold prediction. And I think Rey Mysterio will win this match. Because I think there is... I think Rey Mysterio just needs to have one more moment. I think if he wins the Turquoise Trophy. This will definitely solidify him in the Hall of Fame. He already is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the all-time greats. Hell, the guy lasted an hour in the Royal Rumble in 2006 and won the whole thing. And then ended up winning the championship at WrestleMania that year. So you tell me how he waited until WrestleMania 22 that year to win the belt. But that's not the point. The point is, you're going to have this match go down. I think overall, Ray could win. I'm not going to go into theories on why he could. But I just want to see Rey Mysterio win. So therefore, the winner of the gauntlet match of the Turquoise Trophy will be Rey Mysterio. Despite the fact they keep promoting AJ Styles to win it. So maybe AJ will win. Most likely it could happen. But, you know, left to say, that's going to wrap up my predictions for 2020 WWE Super Showdown. So the next pay-per-view prediction video will be on... March 7th next week. How crazy is that? The Elimination Chamber is right around the corner. It will be on March 8th in Philadelphia at the Wells Fargo Center. So have your notifications turned on. There will be another prediction video next weekend. Once again, I want to go on the record. I'm recording this on Wednesday night because I still have to catch up on the MTA board meeting because I'm going to um, commute to council tomorrow. So I have a lot to do. I got to edit this video. I got other things to do tonight. So, thank you all for watching. If you get the luxury to be home tomorrow, enjoy the pay-per-view. Once again, it's at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. So, I just want to quickly go into the Continental 48 for what time the pay-per-view starts there. Thank you all for watching. Until the next one, please take care.